Crypto effects. Bitcoin. Damn. Ethereum. Whoa. Ripple. Oh, poor girl. December seller. Smuck so-and-so. Today we're taking a look at the question, what is going to happen to the market once a Bitcoin ETF is approved? Now, this is an interesting question. I know there's some people that think we don't need one. In fact, it might even be negative for the market because just take a look at what happened to the futures market when that went live. What was it, December 12th or something? December 17th? After all, we're going to have Bax institutional offering, which is physically delivered Bitcoins anyway. So why? Personally, though, I do think there is some value in a physically delivered Bitcoin ETF for now, because there isn't a short market yet. Or at least it's not on the agenda. But what we're taking a look at here is the Vanek proposal for an ETF. This one has been rejected multiple times. Maybe will again. They keep changing it, though. They keep making those little tweaks to get it pushed through. And eventually, maybe they will. This isn't the CBOE one, the Chicago Board Operations Exchange. That one is more likely to go through, hopefully, February. Oh, if that one gets rejected, I would expect the market to react quite negatively. We'll touch on that again, though, before the end of the video. So taking a look at what the Digital Director of Asset Strategy at Vanek has got to say about their ETF. A Bitcoin ETF could perform much like a traditional gold ETF. Institutional investors who do not want to take risks by investing in Bitcoin via less secure and safe spot markets could find ETFs as a go-to option. As a result, the very first day of a Bitcoin ETF could attract as much as $1 billion in investments. Our gold ETFs are already in a few billion dollars range. There are gold ETFs in $10 billion range as well. I wouldn't be surprised if a Bitcoin ETF gets within a few billion dollars range. Uh, interesting. I don't think that there is any sort of parallels to draw that conclusions from, but I do think it's a very interesting comparison to make between Bitcoin and gold because in my mind, Bitcoin is a good store of value if you're looking at a multi-year chart, okay? <laughs> That's important. Is $1 billion enough to make a difference in the market? If you look at the market cap of 211 billion, well, what is just one more? A lot. I touched on it in this video. Here's a clip. Getting right into it then, Bitcoin today, 1.6% gains. Woo! That wasn't very informative, actually. But if you want to watch the entire video, it is linked below. And basically what is discussed in the video is how market cap is a flawed way of measuring actual value. And a total market cap of 211 billion absolutely in no way represents all of that as withdrawable cash. Not even close, sadly. Not to mention margin trading. A billion would help significantly, in my mind. Ten? Well, that would be amazing. So how likely is it that we're going to get one approved? I'm going to take a look at this article from CCN, linked below. Throughout the next two or three months, technical analyst Alex Kruger emphasized that renewed enthusiasm toward the market initiated by BACT and the VanEck ETF will allow the price of Bitcoin to climb back to major resistance levels. Since August, Bitcoin has failed to break out of the $6,000 region due to its low daily trading volume and relatively low trading activity in the global currency exchange market. Hence, as of now, the market needs a major catalyst to engage a proper short-term rally and upside movement. No kidding. And the two financial institutions could be a major factor that may trigger the price of Bitcoin to increase. However, speaking to CCN, Kruger firmly stated that the probability of the Vanex Solid X Bitcoin ETF being approved remains extremely low given the concerns of the SEC towards the state of the cryptocurrency exchange market. If BACT can begin to demonstrate a level of volume that comfortably trump the volume of cryptocurrency exchanges that offer derivatives or margin trading, such as BitMEX and Bitfinex, the SEC could consider approving an ETF. The issue with that is the probability of BACT surpassing the volume of existing cryptocurrency exchanges within a two-month span is fairly low. So let's take a look at what those trading volumes exactly are for markets that offer derivatives like BitMEX and Bitfinex. Bitfinex has a $55 million 24-hour trading volume as of today. Sadly, quite a lot. BitMEX with their huge margin trading is 1.3 billion. 
which if included in the total volume trading for Bitcoin is 19%. That is quite a lot. It's quite unfair to measure something that just came out to exchanges like this. It's, it's, it's not exactly fair. <sighs> so then what might happen if a Bitcoin ETF is rejected? More specifically, the CBOE one than the VanEck, which has been rejected so many times. The possibility that the rejection of the ETF does not hugely affect the price of Bitcoin still exists, but that depends on the narrative that is set by investors and the media in the upcoming months and the anticipation towards the ETF. I think that's a very wise statement. So the next Bitcoin price catalyst could end up being either a positive or a negative thing. It depends what spin the media put on it. It also depends what kind of trading volume we're going to see from backed starting December 12th. Here's hoping it's positive. Hopefully that'll be a saving grace, even if the ETFs are rejected for now. And before we end the video, bonus news. That's right, bonus. We have one more news story that I think is relevant, a different type of crypto catalyst potentially. According to JP Morgan's prediction, damn you, JP Morgan, the US market has a 60% chance of recession by the year 2020. I've discussed this before. I talked about how the fact that during a recession, there is an argument to be made that a global marketplace such as cryptocurrency is a good hedge for the super elite, not for the average everyday person who's struggling for money, for the super elite that want to move their assets out of a falling stock market, there is an argument to be made for that. Whether or not it's going to happen this time is very questionable. We haven't seen it in the past, but the more time that goes on, the more I think it's possible. While cryptocurrency is not guaranteed to benefit from the falling price of stocks, particularly those of the technology sector, which are currently being hit the hardest, more analysts are turning to the crypto markets as an alternative in the event of a recession. Here's hoping. Institutional and mainstream investors alike are going to look to harbor their funds in an asset that has potential to appreciate in a slumping stock and bond market. Bitcoin has been that. You're looking at multi-year charts. Bitcoin has definitely been that. In addition, movements in the security of the US dollar could lead more people to look to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a way to escape incessant inflation. Despite 2018 being a crushing bear market for Bitcoin and altcoins, the industry has managed to grow in terms of development and adoption, two features that could contribute to another price boom as more of the general public becomes aware of and invested in the digital asset. Doesn't that sound nice? I agree with that completely. The more time that goes on, the more likely it is, I feel. Nice to end on a positive, isn't it? Let me know your thoughts. Are you still hauling? I certainly am. I'm worried about tax coming up. I don't want to have to sell anytime soon. But yeah, time will tell if that's the right move, not financial advice. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.